Hi, good evening. Hope everyone is well. We're here. Now, we're at Tropical Nomad. Now, you might remember this room. This is our the podcast room. And as you remember, we used to record a lot of interviews here, a lot of one-on-ones. And it's been a little bit of time since we've been here, but happy to be back uh, today. Um, Dr. Hasveni, um, welcome to the couch here at, at, at Speak Up Speak Up Monday on a Thursday. <laughs> Thank you for inviting. Yeah, this is an awesome room, very comfortable. And now we are going to share a little bit of information, which I hope uh, will bring some uh, lights into everyone's life. Wonderful. And, and look, for those of you who are wondering, correct, if you were here watching Speak Up Monday on Monday, then yes, you would have seen uh, Dr. Hasveni as part of the panel, along with Ivan Rocker and obviously Tracy and myself. So, you know, tonight we're talking about the roots of health, the roots of health. So remember, as usual, make sure you have a pen or a piece of paper or a phone to record this because there's always some absolute jewels, some nuggets of wisdom uh, that you really want to you really want to get, right? You really want to get. So in the next hour or so, make sure you're you're ready to strap in. So look, we'll start today uh, not from there. We'll start with the roots of of Veni, you know. So maybe um, for those who don't know you. Well, maybe just spend a couple of minutes just uh, letting people know just a little bit of, of, about you, and then I'm sure I'm going to take it deeper after that. Okay, so um, my name is Veni. I'm from Kuala Lumpur. I am practicing integrative medicine, which is like the upcoming medicine. Uh, if, it is, uh, if it is new for some people, the word integrative. Uh, so I've been practicing this field for about more than 10 years. I think going to be 11th year this year. And right now, my, mostly my practice is on uh, in Kuala Lumpur uh, in a center called Oxy Wellness. And I'm also uh, like I'm, I'm working as an assistant to a cardiac surgeon in Rafa Cardiovascular Clinic Clinicals. And besides that, I'm here also once in a while uh, because my friend Tracy, she's, uh, you know, running this health hub uh, mission to uh, create uh, some changes, interesting changes with the awareness program. So I work with Tracy in Health Hub Bali. So, yeah, that's my short, um, you know, words about my journey. Wonderful. And you were mentioning yesterday that you started off as uh, heading in a certain direction in medicine yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you changed tack. Can you just uh, remind us of what that was? Yeah, because uh, of course uh, in our family we all coming from a modern conventional medicine where it's like a pattern that or um, I don't know, like a, uh, it's a must to be like a doctor in uh, like a, a person from each family of hers, you know. Uh, should be a doctor. So while I was like researching, you know, my father really wanted me to be, you know, studying the MD. Okay, I started. But as I explore more and more, because my, I don't take drugs for my, you know, medication in a way for myself when I sick since young, I try, you know. And then I was like, something happened in my life where it redirected my life for doing what am I doing. Of course, uh, my father, it's a bit of intense uh, moment when I want to talk about it, but I really would like to share because my father's death is uh, life changing. Where for me, because uh, my whole direction, where am I here, uh, what am I doing, it has a huge role for, uh, or a reason for my father's death. So I don't know whether you all aware about etrogenic, which means drug induced death. So it was a little bit horrible, a tough death for my father. I mean, I accept that, but if it is very painful suffering that it was as a daughter who wished to be, you know, a doctor and then help more people. But if I can't help my own father, it was very uh, painful for me to to see all the, you know, it's a bit tough for me even to express it out. But in short, so my father's death was uh, a wake up call for me to 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 see what's happening, you know. So and then I explore, explore. I discover uh, many parts of 
helping patient to get better without drugs, without medication, what I mean, especially in chronic illness. And I really, really interested in preventive medicine. And then I explore again and again. And then I met all these interesting teacher. And then I learned a lot of field, as I said, homeopathy, you know, more integrative medicine, uh, detoxification, more and more. And I feel I'm very happy because, uh, you know, I, I can bring little change in my patient's life so it means a lot for me and i'm very happy of what i'm doing in my life right now mm. including talking to you bob yeah bob, so. yeah you can call me bob it's okay <laughs> we're on the couch there's no problem mm. you know the, the the interesting part of your story is you know as you mentioned integrative medicine you know is is a buzzword i think now for a lot of people so we'll, we'll dig dive into that a little bit more later but also you know, it's this Healing without drugs, you know, that's uh, that's a very powerful topic that I'm sure we're going to dive into a, as well. And your story of you know losing a loved one so close to you in yeah. in such a in such a way that you know like a course correction, you know, in your life to where you know has led you to this moment. So you know when you mentioned before about you know, your family was was heading in one direction, and you know that's what you did. Right, that's what that's where you were heading. That was your trajectory, and it changed. So, looking back now, you know, is there anything that you would have changed? You know, along along that journey, um, you moved into integrated medicine. You know, was there any way that or anything you would have changed, would have studied, would have done? Would you have bothered going to med school in the first place? Like, like, what would you have done differently, knowing what you know now? Um, I mean, of course, uh, you know, <laughs> I I always wish to save my father, you know, like if I know things earlier, uh, that's my first thing I want to do in my life, even though, as I said, I accept that, but not a horrible that way as what happened to my father. C can you tell us, sorry to interrupt you, um, what would you have done differently, knowing what you know now? Yeah, like, uh, because probably I may stop my father to taking those medications, because now I know that I'm not talk I'm not saying that medication not needed at all, but for certain uh, illness, you know, the more I w I'm exploring this field, especially for chronic diseases, there's a lot of way that I, I can help which is I'm helping my patient without medication. So I wish if I know the tools, what I know now, uh, I use that to my father, you know, and then I could mm. change the entire, because it's it's okay to, as I said, but because the way he died was very traumatic, you know, very traumatic. So, so yeah, the, the, the tools, what I mean, like, you know, first about preventive, of course, you know, if I know that, the way how to live healthy because to be sick uh, you we don't need to do anything especially in the world just follow the floor whatever you know food they are advertising on the tv we eat that you know and then follow the flow it's perfect to be sick but to be healthy is an investment we have to do something to be healthy in this planet because we don't have choice uh, because I think during the, the our our Monday program, uh, you know, I even say an important word, which is very beautiful, because we cannot be sick just because uh, of ourselves alone. You know, it's a lot of factor influencing uh, the health of a person. So yeah, I mean, what I mean, come back to the subject. Uh, it's like knowing things earlier, and then if I could prevent it, uh, you know. Uh, like uh, educating my father probably in certain lifestyle, you know, he c which could prevent the disease, which could prevent him to take th those drugs and then die in a horrible way, you know. So, yeah. Well, I mean, we have this term, you know, lifestyle medicine, yeah. you know, integrative medicine, you know, that word medicine. I remember we, we, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Don Tolman mm -hmm. and we had his son on the show, Tyler Tolman. And, you know, his dad was, I met him years ago, and his dad was one of the first people to, to explain to me in no uncertain terms, but very simply, food is medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, lifestyle is medicine. So, you know, I know that you treat stage four cancer as well, right? So, so for people watching now, you know, maybe they know someone, maybe it might be them, maybe it's a loved one that might be in a similar position to where you were. You know, so from the patients that you've treated, the tools that you have now, and I know that every case is probably different, but just to give people an idea, what or how 
would you treat stage four cancer? You know, what tools do you use? Um, is there a systematic way that you approach it? And, and what would that look like? Just give us an example. Yeah. Yeah, you are right. It's a systematic. I mean, it's what I mean by systematic means it's a system healing because tumor, okay, we have a genetic uh, contribution, but now you can see. Uh, uh, if I can remember, uh, you know, most of my patients, if I see 10 patients, 9 out of 10, they don't have any history of family history of cancer. So I don't understand what the genetic role playing here. But what I understand, one thing is the common factor that because I go uh, like uh, very deep with the case taking because I really interested, uh, you know, to know what could be triggered a cancer you know in a person's life beside genetic so the first question of course we all ask do you have any family of history of cancer no no so the more i hear the word no it makes me open up like hello wait wait a second what's happening so then i explore more deeper deeper yes you are right it's a systemic uh, treatment that we need because some say cancer is genetic, yes, but the more you explore cancer, it's becoming like a metabolic disease, right? So we have to uh, bring back the body into the homeostatic level in order to, how to say, help the patient to recover, you know, from wherever they are. Now, I'm not talking about cure because cure is a big process. It may happen, it may not happen. We don't know. For stage four, it's very complicated to use, uh, you know, the word cure. It may not happen, it may happen, it depends. Because I'm also looking at other patients who are not treated by me, they are stage four, but they've done so much other work, they are not with active disease. So, but when I work with patient and I can see a lot of common, common like, how to say, common factor, for example, like the food, right? So interestingly, uh, you know, I received a patient maybe five years ago, colorectal carcinoma, you know, colon cancer, I, you know. So it was uh, amazing because this patient came to me and then I was like taking a case. Okay, when you discovered two years ago? Okay, you know, I was like, so what do you have doing so far? A surgery? No. I was like, really? Because he told me that he cannot pass two and there was like blood coming up, you know, and then this. He say, his surgeon say, you have to do it, otherwise you may end up with a medical emergency, da, da, da. But two years, the two years is still sitting in front of me. So I was like so, you know, ex uh, like impressed, like, oh, you're still alive. Uh, what's happening? Like, are you able to pass too? Yes. Then I was like, what you did, you know? Okay, you didn't go to hospital, no surgery. What exactly you did? And then the first thing you say, oh, I changed my food all into organic. That's the only thing I did for past two years. I didn't go for scan. And then here I'm sitting in front of you. And what I did, like every day, you know, I was like feeling better and better. In six months, I was able to pass stool again. And then there was no more bleeding. My stool color regularized. You know, I was like, how is it possible, right? Medically, you know, he never do anything, you know. But this is like a, a, a real case, you know, I'm hearing from patients. So then I realized, what, diet playing an important role. Mm -hmm. And then I'm at le stage four liver cancer. I'm not lying. This is a real case, but they're not my case. We was conducting like a talk, public talk. And then I receive a case, liver cancer, diagnosed. And I'm seeing him after three years. And then I, I, I always curious, you know, what, what, what happened? Like, how can you still alive, you know? Because stage four liver. And then same thing, the diet, you know, coffee enema, a meditation, and the perception. First thing, all these two patients, you know, when I interview them, they remove the fear. Because when the fear comes, you know, it makes you numb. You, you cannot, you know, like uh, make a decision. You're in hurry, you know. But this patient slows down in their life you know, connected to themselves and then follow their heart. I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to oncology, no. I'm just sharing this journey of a patient who actually give me light. Oh, you know, lifestyle is important again. You know, food is so important because these are the people who are still alive, right? Mm -hmm. So systemic treatment is so important when, whenever we are dealing with a disease like cancer, so diet, you know, of course, a little bit of ex exercise. Uh, of course, it depends, you know, stage four, 
some patient have energy, some patient are already so sick. So my advice, you know, is to general, you know, general, like how to say, uh, advice. You know, not for the very sick. Very sick, probably what I'm saying may not be applicable. So people, you know, with a cancer generally, so you can do chemo, radio. It's all about your personal choice, right? And then with along with that, remember, it's so important also to change what causing it. You know, we know that glycophate and the chemicals being introduced, you know, tons and tons to the planet have huge contribution for chronic illness, growth, including cancer. So that's why I always uh, educate my patient, stop feeding slow poison. Because every time, every day, we're eating little bit, little bit, but in a way, it's like a slow poison, you know. So one day we have to face the big injury, so-called cancer. So diet, lifestyle, a lot of purification means detoxification of the body so that they have more space to heal because toxin always a being obstacle, you know, for the body to be healed. So we do a lot of, you know... Uh, how to say detoxification like hydrocolon, coffee enema, and all this also we do uh, as a how to say along with the modern medicine treatment. So it's not one way of healing; it depends. So if patient coming with a chemo radio, I say yeah, go ahead. You know, it's your choice. And then what we do, we do a lot of supportive treatment. Okay, you know, mm-hmm. the poison is we need to kill the tumor, but it's also destructive for the whole body. So we reduce the toxic load by doing some detoxification a lot, like as I said, hydrocolon, coffee enema, you know, stuff like that. And some, of course, intravenous, you know, like we we work in a team, right? So every, per, you know, doctors and therapists, uh, you know, they will come out with a different, different, um, how to say, uh, approach. And, you know, we, we will see what the patient needs. So integrative medicine is personalized medicine. As I say, one protocol doesn't apply for all. So we work with the patient as a person you know we never treat them as a, oh you're cancer cancer yeah cancer is clinically for us to understand uh where the disease stand but we really treat them as a patient and a person and what the person needs in order to be get better wow. yeah yeah because we were talking as well on monday you know as as we do you know mind body spirit you know that you know yeah. like where does where does the disease start you know and we said about your thoughts the mind so then what you're saying is you know these lifestyle factors are very important and as you've noticed in many of your patients you know or a high percentage the diet just changing the diet alone has a massive it's changing the diet yes but it's not only type of food but you know eating the real food you know okay, so eating many, yeah. real food whole food whole, whole health food, uh, poison free poison free yeah and so i mean poison free right so poison free for a lot of people would that would you call that organic yeah organic is a fashionable word now organic yeah. organic but i don't know how re- Organic in our world here yeah, in Asian country, really but at least we know it's less poison, you know. Yeah. So the soil have to be organic, not only okay without pesticide, but you know the soil yeah. also if it is having a lot of huge amount of pesticide yeah. absorb back. So at least the life food. So now uh, what we are doing in Malaysia, like we are in a community, like you know we work uh, like I, I will channel my patient to the farmers who are doing small, small farming, you know, who are really care about the uh, earth and what they put on the earth. So, yeah, there's a lot of beautiful, beautiful people that I am meeting in my journey, the community of a farmer who are actually helping and they make it pay a price reasonable because not all can afford the organic. So they make it like more affordable and, you know, yeah, at least small, small change daily that we can apply into our life, it can bring a huge change in the future, right? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty revolutionary in a way, you know, because we've all heard about markets and, and so on, but, but what, what you're doing there is that you're introduce, introducing your patient to the farmer. So it really is, uh, you know, from farm, farm to their table. Yeah, yeah, w- because I eventually is it's better if we can plan our own food. Of course. Right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of, I'm hearing many things, but which I feel I shouldn't share because I'm not sure because the real food probably I don't know whether it's going to be even more spoiled already being spoiled but how much is going to be modified further we don't know so the best is like that's why now uh, my mission is also to help a patient of course sometimes if they're very sick it's like it depends with the situation but 
uh, my cancer patient, even my patient who want to learn about healthy, we all like into uh, going, you know, eventually to learn how to plant. You know, you touch, you feel uh, the vegetable. It's a, you know, it's it start from there instead of like, you know, yeah. So in, who knows what's going to happen in the future, but it's so important for all of us learning the tool. Why not? You know, from the farming, you know, you, you know, I was so surprised even because I live in uh, apartments. We always uh, say, oh, I don't have space. You know, we have thousand reasons for not doing it. Right. But if you want to do it, you can have one reason to do it so i can see the the now a lot of way of planting uh, coming up which we can you know watch on youtube a healthy way of planting simple way of planting in the small space that we have mm. so yeah plant our own food is like maybe a, one of the important route for health mm. that i would like to share here that's yeah a, that's a great one you, you know what uh when you were talking before about about the farmers the um the word came up, right? The term, right? It's uh, uh, soul farming or soul food farming, as mm. in your soul. Yeah, soul. Because that's what you're saying, right? That, that again, you're taking the time, and it's mind, body, spirit. So you're taking the time with the food, and, and you're nurturing it the whole way through. Yes. And that contributes to the energy that comes and the life force that comes through back into you. It is. Yeah, that's that's it soul. It's soul farming. You heard it here, folks. Uh, first, soul farming. It's a thing, right? Right. Mama yeah. Mia. Right, so so now we spoke just a little bit earlier on about the blue blue light. No, the blue uh, zone. Blue zone. Yeah, blue zone. R- wonderful, because I saw, uh, I think it was Joe, Dr. Joe Vitale, um, one of the YouTube, not YouTube, it was on uh, like Instagram stories, and I remember seeing a blue glass and, and saying, you know, pour water into it, leave it out, mm. you know, and then drink it later. Now, I'm not sure if that's related, but from what you told me before, if you wouldn't wouldn't mind repeating that again because I thought it was really good and I think it would be very valuable yeah. for people to hear. So, in other words, uh, what is it? And like a little definition and a little description of what it is so people can understand. And then how do you apply it? And what's, what are the, what's the outcome? Yeah, because uh, Blue Zone is also very new for me because, uh, you know, I, to, today I was uh, reading, you know, reading, reading. I received an email uh, you know, it was, it was very interesting to read. You know, Blue Zone is about, uh, you know, a certain human population from what I learned today. I don't know how, you know, the deep yeah. truth about it. So it's about, uh, you know, a certain zone of the area of people who live longer, healthily. So we always wonder, is it like the zone, you know, in out of the, you know, the city or, you know, where there's no pollution, everything is perfect, water is good, da, 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 you know, it's not that. So this uh, research was done, a group of people, I can't remember the name, you know. So they are talking about uh, the, this blue zone where it was in the middle of L.A., Right, LA. So where One this most polluted cities in the world? Yeah, in the world. And these are the people, uh, the small uh, group of people who are living longer. And then like, they start to explore what's going on, you know, with the environment. We have, you know. So what did they discover? These are the people who are not eating, you know, like the super healthy diet or what we believe, you know. So they are the people who are eating bread, cheese, you know. The kind of a uh, diet lifestyle, but what it's so amazing is when it comes with the food, it's like from what I was uh, reading, they all eat uh, with happiness, mm. you know, together, like eat with happiness, no guilt. You know, sometimes when we are in a strict diet, oh, it's a cheating day, I feel very bad, you know, I eat pizza, you know, the guilt. So, feeling guilty and eating the bad food is the worst than, uh, you know. You know, so the, the essence of the story is like these are the people who actually live happily and uh, eating, you know, with the happiness together and then exercise, of course, every day. And uh, there was many criteria, but I can only remember a few. And the last criteria was these are the people who are happy with what they have. They never compare themselves with others. You know, so there is no, how to say guilt or anger or this you know they are very simple and happy with what they have 
So this is also a very important message. Yeah, actually they have many many criteria. I'm sorry I can't remember, but the beautiful message is, uh, you know, the it doesn't matter. You know where we live, we can make our own space as a blue zone. So it's all started from the house, where at least a small small little change that you can do. Be be sure that your what I realize in Bali, because of the humidity, everywhere I go to certain kind of uh, building, I feel the mold. Yeah. You know, mold is not really good to be in here, right? Tracy was talking about, Tracy is like our friend from Health of Bali. So she's talking about a group of people about safe home, you know, who will analyze the home environment. So make sure your home environment is safe. So that's number one. I think one of the criteria is which was written in the, you know, blue zone requirement. Uh, make sure that you don't have a lot of, you know, you know, people love to spray the chemical, oh, cockroach and these, you know. So that is so toxic, right? So at home, chemical-free, toxic-free environment, a simple way we can do, right? And number two, of course, you know, water. I think Bali water system, I'm not sure, but all over the world, even Malaysian water system, it's a bit polluted, you know, chlorine, heavy metals. So make sure we drink a clean water even though it's difficult, but at least get some filter, you know, get it clean and then, you know, enjoy drinking clean water. So start at home, what I mean, you know, what we drink, what we eat, small, small changes that you can do. Why not? You know, the the, the detergent we wash, so much chemical, we think it's just for the clothes. Come on, everything like can be absorbed through the skin, right? Simple, simple tips that you can learn now on YouTube. So maybe from... Uh, Tracy Helta Bali, you know, so our mission is to create awareness by giving small, small tips that we can apply daily into the life and make our home as a blue zone, you know? Yeah. Got it. You know, so, so we're here, if you're just joining us, we're here on, on the couch at Tropical Nomad and we're interviewing uh, Dr. Hasveni, who was here for Speak Up Monday on Monday, which is also here at a different part, different place in Tropical Nomad with a studio audience. And here, we don't have a big studio audience. And, and look, we're talking, to, we're talking you know, to today about the, the roots of health, the roots of health. So if, again, if I ask you, you know, which other roots of health, I mean, we've spoken about lifestyle, we've spoken about food, We've spoken about the place in which we live. Mm -hmm. You know, we've spoken about the water that we drink. We've spoken about, you know, the the, the detergent uh, that we use on our clothes because whatever we're washing our clothes in, we put it back onto our skin yeah. and the skin is, is absorbing this, right? Yeah. And I remember we spoke about, you know, I think this was with Tracy, that heavy metals seem to be quite strong yeah, yeah. Um, in the mm -hmm. test that people have here in Bali. So Bali. Th there's a heavy metal thing going, going on as well. So, so what other uh, roots of health uh, would you say uh, w would be important for people to, to acknowledge? Okay, so I think uh, I, would li I always like to say the definition of health is about sensational well-being, uh, in a way, the physical body, which we already talk. And then they talk about mental well-being. So mental well-being, of course, you know, it influences with many factors, many. But, you know... I first, I was a little skeptical about, you know, mine, uh, you know, psychosomatic, my influence, uh, you know, the body. But the more, as I say, the work with the cancer patient, the more I go deeper and deeper, why the disease, you know, as I say, disease, uh, the symptom is like tip of iceberg. But below, you can see there's a lot that we need to discover. And the more I discover, then I, I can see the, the mental influence, you know, the mind influence into their illness is huge. Mm -hmm. Because none of my patients, you know, when I try to, because uh, when I was in the States, uh, I and my friend, we, we learn about New German medicine. It's about learning how, uh, it's about Dr. Hammer's work, how the brain, uh, you know, like uh, how every conflict in our life that we face can trigger a certain illness. It's a beautifully said. First, I was like, when I was learning, I was like, hmm, you know, I'm not sure. But I was so impressed with Dr. Hammer's work because I am working with a live human being with disease. And you wouldn't believe it, about 90%, it, it's the accuracy. Because the more I go deeper with particular conflict, you know, for example, like colon cancer, I have many 
patient with colon cancer, you know, it's because colon is a place where it's about letting go too, right? Something that you, you don't want, you have to let it out. And uh, when the person is going through something that, you know, okay, I just give an example of my patient. I don't want to mention the name. Mm-hmm. So she she lost a daughter, okay, because of cancer. And she didn't cry for five years. You know, the grief, grief that she used to carry. And she can't let it go because it's a daughter, you know. And she suffered with the treatment like chemotherapy and uh, the anger and the, you know, and the grief. And now uh, she, she didn't let go of the, every incident that happened. You know, and then, uh, you know, she developed stage four colon cancer. And then I was like, you know, you wouldn't believe it. She's like, uh, you know, healthy diet, right? Because once, uh, you know, a whole family into a little bit of a uh, healthy diet, not a little bit, a lot, you know, organic, juicing, detoxify, you know, like detox, the coffee and she travel, you know, to Thailand to go for the detox program. She does all that, yet she developed stage four. You know, and then I receive another patient from Germany, yoga teacher, organic, veg, you know, vegetarian, perfect, colon cancer. And both these patients, you know, I was like wondering, they ticked all the box that what I'm educating patient to be healthy, right? Yet how they can have stage four cancer. So community, if I see she can't let go her daughter who passed away, the pain. And this one can't let go her mother who also passed away. So they're holding up. Because I, because for me, right, I'm not just prescribed, okay, bye, you know. I, I travel with patient, you know. I, I see, I, f- I try to feel. And I, it's real, you know, what I am experiencing. It was amazing. Then I start to discover, oh, wow, there is a huge contribution from conflict and also the pain that we are carrying that can also, you know, contribute for disease like cancer. And then I explore more how, because I'm not a therapist, I'm not specialized on this factor, right? I mean, in the field, then I started to learn, uh, you know, then I discover about my friends who are doing a uh, family consolation, you know, so, body so work. L- l- let me just stop you there for a second. Just want to, because I, I don't want people to miss what you just said. And I think it's crucial. So what you're saying, because I remember, you know, whenever I, even even today, that I'll tell you that story later, but even today, you know, something on my body, I was training this morning, and something on my body kind of was strained, right? So I checked, you know, significance of X, right? And I went to it, and then it came out with a, just the, the perfect analogy. Not even analogy, it went straight to what it was. So I remember it was Louise Hay back in the day, um, you know, which was was just talking about this and did a massive book about it as well. Mm -hmm. So when you, you know, would like stub your toe, you could go to this book and it would say, okay, the toe is related to X. Or if I hit my knee or if I hit my elbow or I bang my head or so whichever body part was affected, you know, there's there's not only... um, a reference to what it means, mm. uh, but there's also the, the the guilt that comes with it. So then, what you're saying is that with something like cancer, then what you're finding is that wherever the cancer is yeah. tells you yeah. what the person is experiencing. Yeah. So with the colon, it's his inability to let go of trauma related to letting something go. Yeah, letting something wow. go, like business loss for men. Right? I have two, uh, you know. Colon, many colon cancer patients, but two of them specifically, because in a recall healing book, it's like they give so many examples, but I was just like amazed how these examples can also like be so accurate, you know? So the men who, you know, who, because men hardly express, like women, we create drama, I don't know, but it's also not enough for some women, you know, they suppress a huge trauma. So for men also, I have seen, you know, they went through a huge failure in life business failure and they can they don't know how to let go right and men uh, mostly not all men but majority of men that I have met it's all about oh, you know it's difficult for them to share whole 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 and then yeah it's like wow business failure business failure like huge failure in their life you know they can't let go I'm just using this as an example but every other illness not only cancer have a background of some emotional conflict 
you know, mm-hmm. because it's, uh, be, and then what I'm trying to do is like, okay, cancer is one part. Every patient that I'm meeting, right, I start to, you know, just uh, go a little bit deeper. They tell me, like, how are you, you know? And then they end up with tears. I mean, they're coming for a small issue, and then they are like, you know, so what's happening here? Mm-hmm. You know, because I can see, yeah, integrative medicine is becoming big, Detox is becoming big, but we all like, you know, uh, you know, now windows are opening up for mental health, emotional healing, you know, but of course we have to, there are so many things available in the planet about healing uh, ourselves, but uh, personally I feel uh, discovering, first we need to know, because a lot of time we, th- we think, you know what, I'm fine, I'm fine, you know, but every time we start to go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, and then it surfaces out, surfaces out. So it's a sense that, you know, why we can't feel and why we always feel okay because the sensation or the connection with ourselves is no more there because we're too busy, you know, have to go work, by how this, that, that. It's all about external factor and we forgot that we are alive. That's why cancer, you know, even though it's a tough journey, I specifically remember this word uh, told to me by my patient. It's a wake-up call because when cancer comes, who cares what happened in the world? It's all about myself. I spend time for myself, feel myself. You can you can see the changes because I have few patients who I met just before the diagnosis. And then you know we refer them in a biopsy come how their personality is right, and then you can see the change changes from a selfless yeah. person become selfish or I won't use the word selfish self care, yeah. you know. So it's so important, guys, you know, to be connected to ourselves. But we First, need to discover the reason why we are disconnected. All right, and then if I go deeper and deeper, and then I, my friend, you know, who is a facilitator in family constellation, you know, then I discover wow, with the base is the relationship with our parents, mm. because our parents is our, you know, people who introduce us to the world, you know. So the relationship with parents is always a base. Right, and then a uh, next layer, next layer, next layer. So, so this kind of therapy, like body work, you know, and then family constellation, maybe many more, which I don't know. I haven't explored that field. It's, I feel it helps to discover, you know, you can heal, you know, yeah, but the body is fine, but also figure or find a way to heal the inner self. It, I feel it's so essential and very important because. I can see when my patient do that, it helped them uh, to 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 recover even better in their cancer journey. Yeah, you know? you know, so then, as you mentioned, what it becomes is an indicator to what needs to be healed, yeah, right? Yeah. And the, the the other thing, w- which another aha moment, just sitting here talking to you, Sister Venny, right? Is you know we've been going through this pandemic right yeah. uh, covid and so on and often we say that the mental Help. tsunami right that that's coming L- last night i watched uh, 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 like a marina my, my beloved maybe watch it that's just my story i'm sticking to it <laughs> right uh, uh, but it's actually a great analogy because you know what was happening is that you know with a tsunami the water gets sucked out first mm. in the same way as the life force is being kind of sucked out of you yeah. right and then it comes back bigger better stronger and and so with this whole mental health thing not thing this mental health tsunami it, what i can then see is that when it hits which it already is hitting it's going to last for a long time why because you know based upon what you're saying so if you know, a particular cancer in the body uh, is caused by a particular trauma, which we, we cited before about you know, the inability to let go, for example. Now, we've been through this big uh, pandemic, which accelerated and uh, exemplified the challenges that we have already. So, for example, let's say you know, there's something happening in my body and, and, you know, but I'm busy, you, yeah. you know, I'm working away, I'm doing my thing, ah, I'll put that aside, right? During COVID, th- there wasn't much time to do that. Mm-hmm. You have to sit with it, yeah. which is uncomfortable. And so, you know, what you can also imagine, as you men- mentioned before, you know, what we haven't mentioned quite yet is 
what stops people from taking action about things which they know they need to look into? Yeah. It's being busy. Busy. Right? So then this whole mental is coming up, which then will lead eventually to the symptoms being felt somewhere in the body. Is two years long enough? Maybe yes, maybe no, maybe it will take longer. Yeah. So by the time all of this, it's almost like a debt that has been prepaid but hasn't yet expired, you know? So you can see now that in the next 5, 10, 10 15 years or whatever it might be, a time to come, we're really going to feel it because you know, we've had this trauma that hasn't had the opportunity to be exorcised or hasn't had the opportunity to be let go of. You know, then we've had this two year period of time like a pressure cooker, yeah. which a lot of people, and I know friends who have been cooking in this pressure cooker who are successful and da, 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 but when it comes to this, they're, they're, they feel the heat. Yeah. And then you've got these, these diseases that come as a direct result of shutting down, closing down different aspects of our yeah. being and our body, which, which was caused by, caused by that. Wow. So, so w what do you say to that? It just popped yeah, in my head. Yeah, because diseases are just a language the body choose to express that something not right. What is yeah. disease? System not in ease. Like not in ease. Yeah. What is not in ease? There you go. We had a, the fl light is a not flying in light. <laughs> the light is, is, is not in ease. Luckily, these lights are very light. But, you know, so it's about discovering the system which is not in ease. So-called disease, right? Yeah. So, yeah, the two years was tough because we are forced to be to be in a place uh, without... Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're outdoor, you go out, you know, you're exploring, you know, you put all your time, time spending out, yeah. right? So then you, you don't realize. How many of us realize, you know, sometimes, oh, my heart is beating, really? Huh. Until, the you know, you have some pain or, you know... So what I'm trying to say, you know, if the body doesn't show a signal, right, uh, in a form of disease or pain, we forgot that we, uh, the body exists, right? So disease is an expression of something not right. And the something not right, not, as I said, not necessarily only for the body. And all, what I mean is like, if we want to really be healthy, it's important also to uh, to correct the lifestyle, the diet, and it's so important also to be connected to ourselves to discover, you know, like what makes me not well. Mm. Of course, if you, you know, if you, if it's good, you work with the good therapist because this is like, you know, this kind of work, you, you need a professionally trained, you know, people to guide because it's not easy, you know, who is ready to feel the pain, you know, especially inside, right? And the more I discover, as I said, I, one side is about, you know, I was reading about it and then I attended a course, fine, but now I am experiencing with patients. So I don't, I wouldn't say it's a, it's like not real because my experience with patient, the more I go deeper and deeper, I feel it is really real, you know, the, the connection between the illness and also the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the mental conflicts deeper down, you know. It's about, as I said, sensation. But I think our friend Kyle, you know, yeah, he was saying yeah. about, you know, the loss of connection. Yeah, yeah the tissue when they loss of connection. And also, we lost our connection with ourselves, you know. That's where it began. So, my message is like, you know, all of us need to slow down a little bit in our life. It's okay, you know. And then, I, whatever it is, in a day, at least take 10 minutes time, you know, do some breathing. Because breathing is like easiest way to connect to ourselves. Because meditation for some people is too difficult because they, you know, the mind is like flying everywhere. So breathing and feel the body. It's so important, you know, b before disease come and re to remind you that you exist. Wow. Right? Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. So, that, and I don't want people to get sick because the more I see cancer patients, I wish all of us don't go there. Even though genetically, because I also see people who have strong history of family, can, family history of cancer who do all the work and they're still fine. So, you know, I see two group of people, one with cancer, one without cancer, without family history mm. of cancer. Uh, you know, people who are good with, with the family history of cancer, but 
the different is you know the epigenetic right how we mm. live what we eat work with ourselves feel ourselves you know do what we love to do all that's are important don't you feel that yeah you know what's coming up is a is a different question right because we sat down for the last 45 minutes or so that quick it goes and you know can see that you're extremely suited to what you do yeah right so your manner uh, is very engaging it's very soft it's very reassuring you can tell that you care like you can hear I really it. love yeah, everybody I, I know, that I meet you I know, know but it comes across right yeah. so 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 my question to you then is a little bit out the box you know what would you be doing if you were not doing this a farmer <laughs> <laughs> I really want to be a farmer you know I yeah because it's all c- go back to the root of the soil yeah. because uh, I don't know yeah because if you ask me uh, my next ambition or in future I really were thinking about you know venturing and uh, learning about farming go back touch the soil you know I, I like that life mm. not sitting in a icon building you know I, I miss life life what I mean you know wow. yeah. yeah and you know on that on that note you know farming you know, so again to, to if you're just joining us now uh, we're here on the couch at Tropical Nomad in the podcast room. We used to do a lot of a lot of uh, I- these sorts of interviews, and you know we're talking about the roots of health, and we've touched upon at least ten that I can remember mm-hmm. um, counting. Right. So, if you're just joining us now, make sure you if you're on Instagram Live, rewind. If you're on Facebook Live, rewind. If you're on YouTube Live, rewind. Right, because there's some really vital pieces of information here which will really you know help you um, to reclaim your own health and to be um, you know mind body spirit together right this this unity this alignment right which yeah, yeah. which then allows you to to remain healthy and you know we're here through our dear friend Tracy and Tracy yeah. for those who don't know Health Hub Bali based in Pereira Nun or Pereira Nun, depending on how you want to pronounce it. So, so on Friday, there's a health market. Just check the, the Health Hub Bali Instagram for all the details. So make sure you, you, you go there. And, you know, Health Hub Bali, there's, there's three, three things which I think are important. You know, one is that, you know, Trace is on a call, I think, once every month with, you know, tens of some of the most eminent doctors in the world. So the health of Bali on number one is a dissemination of the latest information in relation to your health. That would be number one. Uh, number two, remember, it's obviously functional medicine. Functional health is, is, at the, is, at the, is at the core, at the core of all of this. So number two is about a network you know, of practitioners. We're talking about Health Hub Bali, but this is global, which you're part of, which we'll get into in a minute. And and so what that means is that you'll enter the system and that could be using a measurement and tool of some description. One that we spoke about, on, I think on Monday was, uh, was it's about thermography, 120 uh, probes, uh, readings on normal temperature, cool the room down, triggers the, the adrenals and everything else, and then you do the same thing again. This goes into some software. Out of it comes uh, this wonderful measurement of what's happening in your body. But where it's extremely powerful is that using latest tech thermography, you're able to detect parts of the body which may be fallible in the future to certain, could be disease or something else. It's a point of, of weakness within the body. So now you have the opportunity to be preventative, right? Yeah. Uh, before these symptoms come. Right? That's one of the measurement devices, measurement tools that Health Hub Body uses. So once you get through that, once you're in that, now what you have is a beautiful map of what's happening in your body. And then through uh, Tracy and Health Hub Bali, then you're prescribed like an individualized client or patient journey, which again is different for all of us. And this journey through different practitioners within the network will allow you to reclaim your health, right? And then the third um, part of it is about how do we uh, maintain standards? Uh, how do we ensure um, that, the pr- that the practitioners coming into this platform have the right skills, abilities, and so on, and um, to be able to ensure to give you the best 
advice, results, and so on. So remember, Health Hub Bali. So the, the best one probably is Instagram. And remember that there's a, there's a health market coming up on Friday where, where you will see and you can interact with beautiful Venny over here and next uh, Ivan Rocker. Uh, Ivan is, is incredible at what he does. So you can see these wonderful practitioners in the flesh ask some questions, have your questions answered. And, and really, again, each time I do these sorts of, of interviews, I learn so much, right? So I think, you know, th this would be number, what, the panel discussions, that was number 15 on Monday. And uh, 15, you know, <laughs> panel discussions with all different types of health experts is like a baptism of fire. Uh, the things that I've become aware of are just mind-blowing, you know, and it's, uh, so I'm sure that, uh, that if you're hearing this, you're listening to this, I'm sure you'll be getting some value as well. Remember the YouTube channel, just go on the future of health, the future of health in YouTube, and you'll see uh, each of those 15 episodes with a panel of wonderful practitioners and experts and giving you the most up-to-date information and the most up-to-date you know, tips. You know, we all love a good tip, uh, uh, a way for us to, to be uh, in that preventative mindset. Yeah. But look, coming back to you, Benny, we've probably got another five or ten minutes left. You know, is there anything left um, that you'd either like to discuss or like to talk about or like to impress upon the audience uh, that may be watching? It could be um, some more nuggets about, you know, this roots of health or it could be about something that, that you know what, that's actually super important, and I haven't spoken about it yet. So I think I would like to, I like to embellish and let people know this. Mm. I think more or less uh, because today, since we only have one hour, an hour, so I, I didn't go very deep, you know. So as I want to say, it's about yeah, important message is like we all have to slow down a little bit in our life. And then uh, spend some time with ourselves. Besides doing, yeah, the blood work is important because, uh, you know, we as a functional medicine practitioner, we also look at the blood because it will give you a clue where you stand functionally. And as he was talking about tomography, yeah, because it's all about looking at your functional disorders because health is nothing but having the balance, right, homeostasis. So these are the two we use to analyze the blood work and, uh, you know, tomography to find find out where you are and another tool we do is also uh, you know scanning the, the the mental health scanning means not really like a brain scan no we kind of go through with certain questionnaire and then we refer the patient to our uh, like a therapist friend you know who are certified to know where they are uh, mentally so my message is like you know health doesn't only like uh, it's, it's achievable with doing one thing but one important thing, of course, is self-connection. And then the more you connect it to yourself and feel yourself, what could be the reason why you are not happy, why you are not healthy, you know, write it down. So spend uh, five minutes every day or, you know, when, uh, you know, maybe weekly ones to sit with you, write down what you feel. Because, uh, you know, lots of sensation, I think, beside COVID cause it, you know, lots of sensation. But what I mean, feeling with ourselves, I think the more I speak with my patient, like, that's kind of missing because we are too busy. Too busy to, you know, to, to buy this, to, to perform, to do this. But first of all, ask a question like, why you have to run so hard for who? right it's uh, the, the end of course the family you know but you know put yourself as a as a priority as well you know what i call not as selfish it's a self-care so number one message that i would like to share it's about self-care self-care about the body self-care about the mind and emotion so you know and then you discover yourself more and then don't we with the disease, you know, knock your door and then take action. If little, little small illness is fine, but big illness like cancer, it's not going to be that much easy, you know, to travel with. It's very hard because I am traveling with my patient and I, I it's not easy in short, you know, very tough and a lot of work. And even though a lot of people like, you know, uh, you know, there was a person who, how to starve cancer cell, you know, Jen McLean, you know, they all made it. But they have to do so much work, so much work. But 
So before going there, you know, while we still have an opportunity to correct our health and to prevent disease, why not? You know, take a step for yourself, for ourselves, you know, to enjoy the life without uh, illness and own our health, you know. Mm. Yeah. You know, maybe the, the, the final question that comes up is, so you mentioned that you travel with your patients, right? So, so my question to you, because you know what I see as well, you know, over the over these fifteen or sixteen episodes, not including you, by the way, uh, you know, but even outside of that, okay, some of the doctors that I've been to see in the past, who know this these things, some that do, some that don't, you know, they don't appear to be healthy themselves, mm-hmm. okay, and then. The longer that I spend with them, then the more I begin to understand, you know, and this can be dermatology. It it goes across the board, not just MDs. So, yeah, it's difficult because there's so much work that needs to be done, so much that needs to be researched. Then you're running a business as well, so it needs to make money. Then you you, you you have all these things which are not even to do with the patient behind the scenes, which obviously then you have family life or, or whatever it might be, um, romantic connections and so on, you know, a lot to maintain as well as your own health. So when you're traveling, could you travel a bit, you know, like, is there like a daily routine, you know, that you follow wherever you are, right? And that's what keeps you healthy or is there something else that you follow uh, in order to maintain your own health, and that's mental, emotional, and physical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, as I said, you know, traveling means I'm learning from patients also, right? You know, because uh, from what they eat, you know, they're very disciplined, disciplined than me, you know. So, so I, I try to maintain, even though sometimes, you know, like many things we don't want to maintain or, you know, stress, you know. For example, I used to work, work, you know, it's just so much stress I can feel, but I really want to help patient just work and until my patient one day call you know doctor we were here you know with a stress stress and look at where we are please slow down and don't be you know uh, we don't want you to face what we are facing and so that was like a wake-up call for me I was like really okay so you know so I while I'm sending them you know to work uh, you know with the therapies like family constellation I do for myself because I know it's not being doctor like well like the angels where you know we are going to be free from the illness no everybody you know carry all kind of stuff in our life so whatever I I how to say I, I teach I practice healthy diet you know little exercise every day small small things like you know pesticide free the detergent that I use so you know and then the emotional workout you know because I have more clarity because when I experience uh, the the you know uh, the how to say doing this uh, how I feel to myself it add on more value to my words right mm-hmm. And it's easier for me also to explain to my patient, like, if I can do, probably you can try, you know, yeah. So why am I using the traveling uh, with the patient means, uh, you know, it's not just I prescribe, you know, done. Sometimes we also go to farms together, you know, like we used to go to organic farm and, you know, like walking and then chatting. I'm hearing, I hear a lot from, you know, their story, like how they used to eat, you know. So then I, 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 I also kind of knowing the parts of don'ts and the parts of do. Yeah. You know, the, you're the embodiment. You know, like w- we say that, you know, you walk your talk. <laughs> yeah. And you talk your walk. You're doing both, but you're walking your talk. Dr. Hasveni, Veni, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you to, we have Ayu Guzman and obviously Hadis over here at Tropical Nomad. Thank you very, very much indeed. But yes, and Tracy, who will be watching this, uh, Health Hub Bali, uh, thank you for the opportunity to interview this uh, wonderful person, Dr. Sveni. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, thank you to all of you. Okay.